I'm waiting on the undersheriff to call me. Uh, Is he that guy's boss? Oh yeah. So first off, I just want to apologize to all the viewers out there that we haven't been putting any content up. Um, it's been extremely busy uh, lately. And um, if you're watching these videos, you're going to see why. About a month or two ago, I got a phone call from Ernova. We chatted a little bit. He told me he would like to have me on the upcoming season of Street Outlaws. See, I'm not exactly sure what happened with Chief, Sean, the whole dynamic of everything, but Sean told me that if he was going to continue to do Street Outlaws OG, something had to change. I guess it was getting stagnant. Um, you're just watching the same guys with the same cars go back and forth every week, week in, week out. So he said he's going to get his 55. Um, he's going to get all the other guys with their street cars, and they're going to make some small tire street car TV. You got to drive your car, no methanol. It's got to be pumpy 85 or you know 91, 93. It's got to be driven to the race, no trailers. I mean, we're talking real deal street cars here. See, my car is set up to do dedicated track racing. You know, we have a weight bar in the front, spring rates, converter, gears. I mean, the car is set up to go radio racing. I mean, the car goes one one sixty foot. So we had to change everything. We pulled the weight out of it, changed spring rates, put weight in the back of the car. We put it on a slip, took the drag radio off, changed the turbo, we changed the tuning. We put a new traction control update from Motec in the car. We changed the entire everything about the car. We changed. <laughs> So we went out to Hennessy, Oklahoma. We, we did some, you know, testing on a road. We went to a private road in town, did some black talk testing. Nothing we could do could really make it down the road. We rented the back of the track and finally towards the end of the night, we started making some progression. Um, the car was getting faster and faster. And that was uh, the night before filming. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys enjoy all this craziness that's been our lives the last couple months. Um, Cause we're gonna put out some pretty fire content and I cannot wait to show you guys the actual Street Outlaw episode that we're currently filming, it's gonna be pretty bad. Everything was good to go until all about maybe 10 minutes ago. Okay. <laughs> like I said, we've got the mission on board, we've got everything else on board. We're just, we're literally at that set, you know. Yeah. I think we're stealing oil from Well, he's probably a bunch of cars in here. That was interesting. Secure road ended up not being so secure. Yeah. But the next road, it's in his town, and it's private property, and the cops are going to say go for it. Yeah. Shit they can do now. We are loaded and in our trip.
tomorrow we'll go out to Thunder Valley and then the back half of the track. We're gonna hopefully uh, go a little bit faster out there, but some of these guys are flying. Like these all-wheel drive Hondas. I feel like the team's got a really good chance to do something really cool on Wednesday night. I think, uh, you know, I don't I don't want to sound cocky, but I think we got a really, really good shot of, uh, of winning. It's about 4, 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I gotta work at seven. So we're gonna run back to Oklahoma City, get an hour or two of sleep, go to work, and then go to the track and test all night till midnight or one tomorrow night. So should be fun. I had, you know, with being assigned to team captain for this new season, I was, uh, I had to round up some people. I had to find 10 cars, 11 cars that I think I deemed worthy to be on my team. Um, anybody that knows me knows that I like unique stuff. I wasn't going to pick 10 Fox bodies or F bodies or, you know, small block Chevy truck. And to me, it was more about the person than it was the car. I tried to reach out to people that had big followings in the respective community, because let's face it, anytime you get different stuff on a TV show, it's gonna be good for TV. It's gonna help grow their brand. It's gonna help grow the street outlaw brand. So, with that said, um, I kind of run down the cars I picked. The first one on my list I called was Adam Pettis. Uh, Adam has a really cool uh, copper colored Datsun 240, small block Ford power, but who the hell puts a small block Ford in a Datsun? He actually beat us at Texas 2K, he went 7-2. So I knew the car was capable of going fast on the track, but did he have what it takes to put in the time to get it to go down the road? And I felt like Adam did. Adam's a very, very dedicated racer. Um, the more I've got to know Adam, it's kind of funny, our paths had actually crossed 20 years ago when I lived in Panama City Beach, Florida, and we were both 19, 20, 20 years old, and we used to race together and we didn't know it. Um, the next car that was on my list I chose was Justin McMurtry. It's a local proven car. He actually won our Coder event, King of the Open Road. Once again, bottom seven second street car. He has Rocky Mountain Race Week. He has Drag and Drive events. It's a 1981, I think, Ford Durango. They only have like 280 of them. LS powered, um, big turbo deal, really fast, well lined out car. Um, the next car I chose was my buddy Sean and Betty. Uh, him and I go back. 15 years. Um, his first street race he was ever involved in was actually riding with me racing Big Chief. So uh, he'd been around this stuff since he was a kid. Um, he doesn't have a lot of experience, honestly, no prep racing, street racing from the dig. He got a lot of roll race experience, but I believed in what he could do and I believed in his program and it was an all wheel drive car. So I felt like with that being said, going down a no prep surface, I felt like he'd have a really, really good chance. The next car we chose um, was some Hondas. Um, I wanted to spice it up. I wanted to bring some Hondas into the Mac, do it in the mix. Because let's face it, the Honda brand is huge. Um, so with so many Honda enthusiasts and obviously import cars in general, I wanted to reach out to those guys. So I picked Aaron Lopez, a very proven winner out of uh, San Antonio, Texas. He's been racing that car for 20 years. And I picked Miles Kerr from Washington up at the English Racing ETS camp. Both cars all wheel drive, both cars stick shift. Both four cylinder turbo cars, and they're not slow. Um, so I think Miles' car is the fastest Integra in the world. I think it went like 200 and something miles an hour and a half mile. The next car we I chose, it was kind of a late uh, addition to the team, was Felicia. Uh, Felicia Smith is a local racer. She had a pretty big following in the CTS world. She's all about racing. She came up runner up in our first annual King Open Road. She does a lot of my events for me. She races all around the country. She's done six week, sick week, TX2K. I mean, she, her and her husband, are probably more dedicated than any of the local racers I know. They live and breathe this stuff. So I knew her car honestly probably wasn't as fast as the rest of ours, but I knew she had the talent and the determination to hopefully make her car go down the road. Uh, the next racer I chose today was Alfred Lai. He was a, a last day edition. Um, one of the other racers I had picked let me know 24 hours before filming that uh, he couldn't make it kind of pissed me off to be honest. So I went scrambling and trying to make some phone calls. It was just too short of a time frame for a dedicated race car per se to come out without testing. So I reached out to Alfred. I knew Alfred would make good TV. He's got a 720S McLaren. Um, cars aren't slow. And I knew, you know, going on the street, they'd have a pretty good opportunity to win. 
One of the other guys I chose is an OG as OG gets, Stacy Barnett. Stacy and I's relationship goes back 10 or 15 years. I met him at TX2K in the late 2000s, like 08, 09 ish, somewhere around there. Um, you know, Bumblebee Viper. I remember I was a kid, I didn't have anything cool and fast. I remember following them around and trying to see where they were racing. So I was kind of a guy looking in, just trying to fit in basically. And I remember seeing him roll race that car, and you know, he ended up doing sevens in that car, and then he had like underground racing Lambo that he did like. 220 and a half mile. He's got a T1 GTR. And that's the car I actually wanted to race. I wanted the GTR. Something happened with the GTR, I wasn't able to make it. So we brought this four eyed Fox body, um, calibrated from a shop out in Arizona. Uh, Owen's his name. Him and Owen were a great team. They came out and represented us very, very well. Mike from South Florida. It's an S197 car. Mike actually won the second class at TX2K this year. It's a proven high seven, high seven second Coyote car. Big turbo. It's a very simple setup, to be honest with you. But let's face it, Mustangs work. Um, I honestly did run a bunch of Mustangs, but if, if the person and the persona worked, I was going to pick a Mustang. And that's what's so cool about the team we chose. We hadn't really raced together. A lot of these guys didn't know everybody. I was the only person that knew every single one. And we all came together the week of, we gelled, we tested together. We put in hours and hours and hours of testing on the street after work until three, four, five in the morning the entire week to try to make sure our cars were done, lined out. So when we went out on set, we didn't get made a fool of. That's the last thing I wanted to do is go on national TV with these cool cars, especially imports, and let the import community down. Um, so I feel like we represented pretty well and you guys will just have to wait and see the episode.